Yeah, so what makes CloudStack robust is a number of things. Uh, first of all, it was designed around large scale um, and, and has been installed at, at incredible scale, tens of thousands of physical nodes and uh, that type of real world experience doing it at scale uh, has made CloudStack very robust. Um, that also makes some assumptions around uh, assuming that things will fail and uh, those types of design assumptions uh, where you're not trying to avoid failure but rather you're assuming that uh, failure will happen uh, has also contributed to make that something that uh, that's incredibly robust and incredibly uh, um, incredibly ready for for real use um, and that's been uh, I think that those types of design decisions have been used throughout CloudStack and and have made that very uh, a very solid platform to build on. Well, you know, when you talk about user interfaces, CloudStack has uh, what most people will agree is the most beautiful user interface. Um, and I think that's somewhat deceptive. Uh, and the reason I think it's deceptive is, is that while it's beautiful to look at and people really like it, um, people who are doing real work with CloudStack at, at any scale aren't using the CloudStack user interface. They're interacting with the API instead, and they may use other tools to interact with that API. Um, I, think it's, uh, I think it's beautiful. I think it allows users to quickly get a sense of what's going on. Um, but I think that uh, I think it's also something that uh, that quickly fades from memory as people start using it because they realize how powerful and useful the API actually is. Well, so so if you go back and look at the history of open source, um, typically open source has always been playing catch up uh, when. Linux was first created. Uh, Linus was trying to create a uh, an alternative to Minix, which was a proprietary Unix operating system. And when commercial Linux really came of age, it was competing with proprietary Unices like Solaris and uh, HP UX. And uh, so, open source has always been typically been trying to play catch up. And cloud computing is, is an area where that has changed. Instead of trying to, uh, to, to catch up with something, all of the innovation is happening in open source. Uh, all of the serious players in cloud computing, it's at least infrastructure as a service, uh, but also now bleeding into platform as a service, uh, are open source. You'll even see um, proprietary vendors who have a long history of proprietary software like VMware uh, they realize that cloud computing is open source and you'll see them doing things like Cloud Foundry, which is a completely open source project. So, so not only is it important, I think it's foundational to cloud computing. I, I don't think that uh, you will see the success of a proprietary cloud platform uh, because the standard has definitely become that, uh, that everything within cloud computing is commodity and is open source. Uh, if you look at the largest clouds out there, if you look at Amazon, uh, Amazon, while not itself open source, is certainly built on that foundation of open source. And so I, I don't think that you will, uh, you, you'll see anywhere where open source is not pervasive in cloud computing. And so I, I, think, it's, uh, I think it's an assumption. I think when you talk about cloud computing, you're really talking about open source cloud computing, unless it's some very niche, uh, niche market. You know, so so individual users um, uh, are very important, and, and you know, for any open source project, users typically are the beginning of the pipeline for people who end up becoming contributors to CloudStack. Uh, and uh, so, you know, there is there's clearly a, a curve there. Um, people who are users uh, are certainly necessary. That's one of the reasons we write software. Um, but you know, people who are using it and testing it, finding uh, 
finding bugs and reporting those bugs so that we know about them. Um, you know, in many ways, cloud platforms are incredibly complex systems, and because they're so complex, that makes testing them, testing every possible use case, becomes more and more difficult. Um, and so users who are actually using it in the real world are the best, uh, the best people to find bugs. And so uh, we love the people that set up a test instance and test upgrades or test new features to see, uh, you know, are they going to work for, for their use case and provide that both the feedback loop and the valuable contribution in terms of telling us about bugs, maybe even proposing fixes and things of that nature. Uh, so I, in many ways, it's absolutely vital to the the ongoing health of CloudStack. You know, so, so as we look to the future of cloud computing, um, I think we're starting to see uh, each one of these technologies begins with typically greenfield adoption. I think we're starting to see the point where people really desperately want some of the promises and some of the efficiencies that cloud computing drives. Uh, I think cloud stack as a project is going to be uh, one of the leaders there simply because it's some of the most featureful and, and, uh, and robust platforms out there. And I think that as we, um, uh, I think as uh, the infrastructure as a service uh, realm continues to mature, that CloudStack's going to continue leading that. And we'll see, uh, I think we'll see things that are currently features that only exist in, in things like CloudStack become, uh, become kind of the, the de facto standards, that the expectations that are, that are necessary. Um, you know, it, it wasn't too long ago till that CloudStack was the only infrastructure as a service platform that had high availability. Um, and now we, we're starting to see that become a standard. So in many ways, I see uh, CloudStack leading that, uh, leading that, um, leading the standard setting that we'll see across, uh, across the infrastructure as a service market. I do think that, uh, I do think that, you know, CloudStack's also setting the standard pretty high with, uh, with our idea behind governance. Um, and I think that uh, you'll start to see folks trying to achieve that same level of meritocracy and community over code that, uh, that CloudStack at the Apache Software Foundation uh, aspires to. And uh, I, I think it will be an interesting next year or two as we see uh, things continuing to evolve. So uh, some of my some of my most interesting uh, deployments, I, I sadly I don't think I could tell where they were from. Um, uh, there's a, there's a major movie studio that uh, um, they were using CloudStack. They were using it to transcode video, um, and so they had this entire on-demand um, provisioning system that would detect how much work there was to do and provision, it, uh, provision instances, have them run the work and then shut them down. And I thought that was terribly fascinating. What I found more fascinating is what they did during lunch, where they would spin up uh, you know, 50 or 60 game servers and play uh, some uh, online game that they would basically host in their company. And they would be playing that company wide uh, on instances that they would provision over lunch, and then as soon as lunch was over, they would destroy all the instances and go back to doing real work. Um, that has been one of my uh, more enjoyable tales to recount of, of interesting deployments. So I'm a weird user. Um, I'm a recovering sysadmin. Uh, and that makes um, that makes my uh, my answers I think a little strange. Uh, I would have to say though that um, from from my perspective, uh, my favorite feature is some of the networking capabilities. The the networking as a service where I can essentially provision 
services and make those available to end users. And then end users can go and say, I need a load balancer. I need to configure a firewall, which was something that as a traditional operations or sysadmin person, I would never have allowed users to, to get passwords to set up. The fact that that's all abstracted away and people can do really complex networking stuff and effectively not even have to ask for permission is, is pretty awesome and empowering. So uh, CloudStack as, a, as an open source project, um, I think you can expect a, a lot of things. We're seeing um, lots of people wanting to start scratching their itches. And so I think you're going to see a lot more user-oriented uh, development. And by user-oriented, I, I don't mean to say that it hasn't been focused on users here before, but I think that, uh, that instead of now a limited pool of, of folks working on it, uh, we can essentially have anyone come in and start working on a feature that they care about. Uh, so I think that that means that the most passionate users will become contributors and that they will, in the process, um, greatly broaden the horizon for CloudStack. I think, uh, I, I think you're going to start seeing a lot more of the processes uh, going through iterations and becoming more efficient uh, from, from handling, and I think that will end up making uh, cloud stack even more stable and more robust because uh, we'll be we'll be iterating faster through tests we'll be iterating faster through changes and uh, and I think everyone in the end will benefit from that <laughs>